Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have another mail day video and I've got this, I mean, this is heavy. This is pretty heavy. I believe, I think this is sent to me by Wouter. He sent me an email. He said, I've got a bunch of foreign cards. I'd love to send them to you. I don't do anything with them. I know you collect them. So Wouter, thank you so much, man. At least I think it's yours. And then I have a little trade mail, uh, which is sent to me all the way from Canada. But more about that later. I'm gonna start with uh, with this one. And let's see if, it's, if, if it is what I think it is. And then of course, the second question, can I identify all those foreign cards? That's gonna be fun. Wow, look at this. Look at this, guys. This is a chunk of cards. Let's have a look. Fun, fun, fun. I also have some uh, decks that are completely like uh, foreign black bordered. Oh, nice. This is beautiful. Tundra Wolves. I really like this one. So cool. So a card from Legends, a 1 1 first striker. And then we have Healing Solve. So this uh, prevents up to three damage, or you can gain three life or one white mana, part of the boon cycle. Ooh, an uncommon. We've got a blue ward, protection from blue enchant creature. But these are really, really nice, Valder, and in really good condition. Beautiful cards. This is a circle of protection white. Another healing solve. An Ozai Vultures, a 1 1 flyer. This is a card when a creature dies, it gets a counter on it. You can remove three of those counters, and it gets, I believe, plus one, plus one until end of turn. It's a 1 1 flyer from Legends. Circle of Protection Red, and a Green Ward. Wow, so these are all white cards. And this is this is so much, Wouter. This is kind of insane. Thank you so much for this. I really, really appreciate it. And let's have a look. Okay, this is black. So this is a, um, uh, what's it called again? Is it called a, a Drought? No, I know what it does. It's, it's an Enchant Land, um, two black. Also from Legends, and when the land becomes tapped, the land is destroyed. And then we have a Cyclopean Mummy. This is a 2-1 creature, a zombie now. It's a zombie. And when it dies, it's removed from the game. Really, really cool art. Look at that. Wow. Stunning. A Paralyze here. Enchant creature, put it on a creature, creature becomes tapped, and then during your upkeep, the opponent can pay four to untap the creature again. I love using this in combination with like a land destruction strategy or an aggressive deck, or with cards like Meekstone, it's a way to get, you know, the Sarah Angel tapped. It's quite nice. Another Paralyze. And then we've got the uh, Vampire Bats. So this is an 0 one creature flyer. And for one black, you can give it plus one plus O, oh, and you can only do that twice. So no more than two black can be pumped into this. So it can become a two one. This is kind of nice when you combine it with um, with a bad moon, like a black aggro deck. Talking about black aggro, this card could go in there as well. Drudge Skeletons. I really love the, the colors. And um, by the way, this is, I believe, a Japanese version and you can see that by looking at the full stop if i'm right if the full stop is like this like an open uh dot and it's at the bottom i believe it's japanese so these are all so far japanese cards so this is the drudge skeleton and then we have the scape zombie so the vanilla 2 2 right the traditional zombie from the uh, alpha set okay well let's let's continue i'm really enjoying myself here Ooh, we've got some artifacts. So this is Thomas's Wand. And um, this is a card from the Antiquities and you can pay two and you can make target creature with power two or less unblockable. So it's kind of a, a Dwarven Warrior on a stick. And we've got a clay statue, a three one with two to regenerate. Really cool. A battering ram, oh, it's so nice. Battering ram cannot be blocked by walls. Which makes sense, right? Because look at it, it's a battering ram. It goes through a wall, and when you attack with it, it gains banding with another attacker. So it only has banding when it attacks. So that's, that's pretty unique, actually. I believe it's the only card that does that in old school. 
And then we have the, oh, uh, what's it called again? Grape Shot Catapult, I believe. Four to cast a 2-3 creature. And you can tap it and it deals one damage to a flyer. A conversion, right? Or conservator. Is it conservator? I think it is. Four to cast, three and tap, and prevents one damage to any target. Pretty mediocre, but I do love the art. Kind of like this Aztec Wheel of Life. Or an Aztec calendar, right? Because they're always circular. Very, very cool art by Amy Weber. Then we have another clay statue and a Yoshin soldier. That's the last one of this uh, bunch. It's a 1-4. And when you attack with the Yoshin soldier, you don't have to tap it. That is really nice. And then we have, ooh, this is German. Nice. Auf. Ah, uh, what's the card called again? Yeah, plus two, minus two to target creature. It can be pretty handy. You know what? Before I do this, I'm just gonna check out if I can find maybe some more Japanese style cards. I'm just gonna have a quick glance. Oh yeah, exactly. Because I first would like to finish that part. So here we see blue, blue elemental blast, of course, counters or destroys target red permanent. Very cool. Always in my sideboard with Timmy Spellbook. And here we go, Water Elemental, beautiful. I do love it, you know, I do love a Japanese Water Elemental. Look at that, I mean, it's just so cool with the Japanese writing. Super, super cool, Air Elemental, I love it, I love it. I actually already think I already have two Japanese Air Elementals. This is number three, so almost a play set. That is really sweet. I mean, look at the writing. To me, the symbols are almost like art. Beautiful. Camera's having some issues though, but I love it. Um, creature Bond, that's this card. Um, an enchant creature, one blue and one. You put it on a creature, um, and then when a creature dies, the controller of the creature gains damage equal to the power. Was it power? Can't remember if it was power. A card that hardly sees any play. I remember as a little team, I thought it was pretty good because you can first play a creature Bond and then you know play a terror or something on the creature. Um, and what's nice is this, as you can see here, this is the creature. So this is the creature bond between the wizard and the creature, I guess. And that's, that's something I didn't notice before when I was a little Timmy. I always thought it was just a background, but then when you look closer, you can see the eye here. It's pretty cool. Ah, uh, giant tur tortoise. I want to say turtle, but it's giant tortoise or tortoise. So this card's from Arabian Nights. Actually, not that bad. It's one blue and one for a one one. But as long as it remains untapped, it is a 1-4, so it gets this bonus, which is pretty sweet. So there we go. Then we have a Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, so the OG 1-1 one, one Merfolk. Then we have a Flight, gives target creature flying. Then we have, oh, love it, love it, love it, Phantasmal Forces. I just love the art. I always wondered why there are only three, because it's a 4-1 creature, so maybe it should have four people on the art. I do understand that it's it looks nicer as an artist to go for three, right? But a very cool card. This is a 4-1 flyer for four, so that sounds pretty good, right? But the problem is you've got to pay one blue during your upkeep, you know? And that's The thing is, when you play with blue, you usually want to keep your mana open to counter or unsummon or do whatever. You don't want to already have to pay a blue during your upkeep. So that's kind of a downside, but the fact that you get four power for four in the air, that is pretty good. Then we have, oh, what's this called? Enchantment leak? Something with leak? It's an enchant enchantment. And then you have to pay, you, you the, the, the person whose enchantment is enchanted, so your opponent, right? That you, you play it on your enchantment of your opponent. And then they can pay one to prevent a damage and you can get two damage during your upkeep. And you can pay two mana, but you can also pay one mana and only take one damage. What's it called again? Something with leak. I do kind of like the art. You can see things like leaking away, mana leaking away, power leaking away. Isn't it just called power leak maybe? I don't know, I can't remember. I'm gonna look it up after this video, but really nice art by Drew Tucker, right? Yeah, Drew Tucker, it's gotta be. Gotta be the Drew. I recognize this art all the time. Oh, wow, look at this. I love this. 
Hurlu Minotaur was really the, the poster boy of, of Magic. And I remember the art of Hurlu Minotaur being on the, um, on like the revised uh, booster boxes that you would like kind of look at when you went to your LGS. So Hurlu Minotaur, just a vanilla 2-3, but I just love the art. And I mean, this version, it really speaks to me. It's beautiful. Then we've got The Brute, so a card from Legends. Uh, plus one, plus O. Oh. Something like that, and three red to regenerate. Kind of a weird, weird card, right? Enchant creature. A uh, gray ogre, three mana for a vanilla two two. The pearl unicorn of red. Uh, tunnel destroys target wall. This is actually an uncommon. Back in the day when people still played with walls. Then we have a fire breathing. I just I love the the letter type. So fire breathing. Enchant creature, uh, pay one red. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus O. Oh. An Iron Claw Orc. Look at the smell. He's so smelly. Uh, it's a 2-2 two -two for two mana, which is pretty good, but it cannot block any creatures with power greater than one. So it's really made for attack. And then we have the card we also saw the German version of. Um, I can't remember the name, but I know it's an enchant creature for one red, and it gives plus two, minus two. This is kind of, if you really want to go full risk, it's kind of cool on a juggernaut, you know, you just make it a 7-1, who cares, and go for it. It's pretty sweet. Another Hurlu Minotaur. Another Grey Ogre. Love it, love it, love it. Now I want to have play sets of these cards. They're just so epic. Another The Brute. And, and we have, oh yeah, um, Giant Strength. I actually played this back in the day as a little Tim in my Goblins deck. I love the idea of giving my Goblins Giant Strength. It's like something cool to do. Um, so plus two, plus two. I really like this little fella here, by the way. It's really cool. Would be nice if they would make this into an actual card now. In one of those, um, you know, reprint sets. Really cool. So Enchant Creature, Justin Hampton is the artist. Oh, love it, love it, love it. Herb Elemental. This this bad boy is going to see some play out there, definitely. Earth Elemental, so cool. And then we have uh, Bird Maiden. I love Bird Maiden. She's not very good, but I love the art. I love the smile. I love the optimism that this art piece of art radiates. You know, it's all happiness and having joy. You know, it's a 1-2 flyer for 3 mana from the Arabian Nights originally. Okay, so we've had, um, we've had white, we've had black, we've had blue, we've had red. So I guess I'm going to look for green. And we've had artifacts, of course. And here we have the greens. Just an insane amount of cards here being sent to me. Again, it shows how fantastic the uh, the old school community is. It's just, it's great. You know, somebody enjoys your video, sent you a mail. Hey man, I see you appreciate foreign cards. Can I send you a few? I'm like, yeah, sure. And look at, look, I mean, look at this. This is insane. And I'm what, I'm halfway or something. It's insane. Anyway, um, install energy. So this is really good on a Tim because you have an extra time that you can untap your creature. And also your creature can attack the turn it comes into play. So I think this could be quite nice. Doesn't see a lot of play, but I think it's cool. A nice combo with this back in the day. Well, not nice because it was a horrible deck to play against. Was Stasis, Birds of Paradise, Instal Energy. Because then with your Birds of Paradise, you can untap it because of the install. And then you can pay the cost for the, uh, for the Stasis. So that was like a really nasty combination. Um, and then we have, of course, a Desert Twister, six mana, destroy target permanent. Pretty good card from Arabian Nights. An Iron Root Tree Folk, five mana for a three, five vanilla. A Script Sprites, very playable card. Actually, you know, the little green aggro decks are really finding their way into old school and um, they're having some impressive results. I don't know if you've seen the finals I had here of the Often Troll Cup with a mono green powerless deck. Well, actually it's not completely mono green. It was a little bit of black in there, but it was mainly mono green powerless deck reaching the finals of a tournament with 90 plus old school players. And believe me, there was a lot of powered out super strong decks at that event. 
including my deck, by the way. Um, Ration Spirit, one green and three. It's a three, two. I can tap it and then target creature loses flying. Pretty, it's a pretty cool card. Actually nice if you combine this with Hurricane to save your own flyer, it's pretty funny. Um, then we've got the Boars, so a 4-4, four, four, vanilla, for five mana, only one green, so it's easy to splash. And we've got, of course, the Epic Grizzly Bears, a 2-2 two, two for two mana. That was considered like really good, a 2-2 two, two for two. People were like, whoa, that's really strong, 2-2 two, two for two. And then we have Land Leeches, so this is uh, two green and one for a first striker 2-2 two, two from The Dark. Then we have Nasp Asp, which is a card from Arabian Nights, so 1-1. One, one. Nice little creature, so 1 green, 1-1. One, one. You can attack and then your opponent gets like a poison counter or something. It's not a poison counter, but an Asp counter, let's call it that. And then they have until their upkeep to pay 1 to remove the Asp counter. If they don't, they receive an extra point of damage. And that can be actually quite annoying for, uh, for the opponent. So this is, this is a handy little card. I think it's, uh, it's a little bit underestimated. Then we've got the Prajesh Gypsies, and it's a 1-1, one, one, and you can pay one green and one tap, and target creature gets, I believe, minus two, minus O. Oh. Then we have Regeneration, really like this art by Quentin Hoover. You can really see that, that, that arm of the wizard being regenerated. It's pretty cool. Kind of a Viking art style. I really, I really like Quentin Hoover's art a lot. So an enchant creature, and, and uh, that creature gets one green, regenerate. And then we have the 1-1 uh, the Walking Tree. What's her name again? Shadowdin Dryad? Is that true? Or am I mixing things up? I'm mixing things up all the time, by the way. It's a 1-1 one, one with Forest Walk. Um, okay, let's see. What else do we have? Oh, we got more cards. We got more black cards, insane Japanese, I believe, still because of that that dot. I made a video, by the way, where I explain how you can recognize the differences in language when you're looking at a, a foreign a Asian language because it can be Chinese, Korean, um, or Japanese, but it can also be traditional Chinese. So there are different versions. And just by looking at the full stop, you can identify them. So I'll, I'll place a little link that you can click on that one. Um, yeah, if you want to learn how to do that. The problem is I taught myself how to do it, but I keep forgetting. But I believe this is this is Japanese with the full stop at the bottom. Anyway, this is the giant slug, which is not that giant because it's just a one one. Always wondered why, you know, why do you call it a giant slug if it's just a one one? Also look at the art. This could be a one one, right? So you would assume if it's such big of a slug, it would be at least, I don't know, a four four. Then we've got the Hasran Ogress. So another card from Arabian Nights, two black for a three two. And I think if you don't, you got to pay two black during your upkeep or take two damage. Something like that. I'm not quite sure. Or if you don't attack, you take two damage. Uh, I can't remember. Then we've got the Bok Reds. I think it's just a 1-1 one, one cannot be uh, blocked by wolves, which again is very flavorful because a rat, you know, just goes, it loves wolves. And then we've got a Wall of Heat. Hey, we got red cards all of a sudden. So Wall of Heat. Card from Legends 2 6 Wall. And we've got Fire Drake. Card originally, oh, we can see the dark symbol. From the dark, a flyer, a 1 2 flyer. And it's actually an uncommon in the dark. Which is something that, that always surprises me is Fire Drake is an uncommon in the dark, but Ghost Ship is a common, which in my opinion is, is far, far better than the Fire Drake. And then we have some more cards. Wow, I love it, I love it, I love it. Some more foreign Japanese, I believe. This is a wall of vapor. So it's uh, four mana and it's an 01 wall and all damage dealt to the wall is reduced to zero, I think. Another wall of vapor, card from Legends. Then we have um, fish liver oil, of course. So one blue and one and gives tar enchanted creature island walk. Really cool to use with Merfolk Assassin. I actually have a deck that does that. It's not good, but it's, it's a lot of fun to play. Another fish liver oil, another one. Ooh, is there almost a full play set? Oh, now I need that fourth one. Look at this. This is like, this is what always happens to me with magic collections. I got like three of something. I need four and then I want four of the whole thing. And uh, anyway, whatever. Um, and then we have enchantment alteration. Uh, an instant or is an interrupt? I think an instant for one blue and you can move target enchant land or enchant creature to a new target. 
Um, I want to I want to use this with like Control Magic or with Kutsu. Would be pretty sweet as well. There there are some nice things you can do with this. Um, then we have oh uh, man, I forgot the name. Scarewood. He he lives in Scarewood. It's a one one. Uh, one green and tap and sack destroy target artifact. Scary little fella. Like you always say when I'm looking at this this artist, that's not his hand. It is not. Think about it. Um, and then we have the Gasban Ogre. So this is a 2-2 two, two for one green, which is really good. But as soon as, as soon as you have less life than your opponent, it goes to the other side. So it's a super coward. But uh, I love it. And I think it's good in like, like a red-green aggro deck because then you've got the bolts to kind of keep you ahead of the curve. So you always have, have loyalty from this dude. And another one, nice, two of those. That is really sweet. Oh, this is the, now I remember, Scavenger Folk, of course, Scavenger Folk. A card that sees a lot of play. Before I go into the whites, I have some more. Oh, what's this called again? Metamorphosis, right? Um, one green sack, a creature. Gain mana equal to the creature's casting cost, plus one, I think. And you can use that mana only to cast creatures, which is for me is kind of regretful because it would be would have been so cool if it would just be use the mana for whatever. Uh, it still wouldn't be too good, but hey, it is what it is. Card from Arabian Nights. Oh, this is beautiful. War Elephant, two two banner and trample, which is as far as I know the only creature that has banning and trample together. Um, yeah, this is just a two three vanilla. What's it called again? I forgot the name. Forgot the name. This is the Archer, right? Um, tap deals two damage to target attacking creature. Or is it one damage? Uh, is it one or two? Can I? It's one damage, right? Because I see a one here. So I assume it's one damage. Maybe also to a blocking creature. Nice art card from Legends. Then we've got... Another card from Legends. This gives all blocking creatures plus O plus two. Shield defense or something? I mean, uh, it's always like a good memory game, you know, to try to guess the names, see if I can remember them. It's good. Little bit of, little bit of brain training. Then we've got Death Ward. So this is uh, one white for an instant target creature gets a regeneration until end of turn. Like you can just regenerate it, which is nice. Um, Banalish Hero. Uh, Circle Protection Blue. Uh, Mess Up Pegasus. 1-1 one, one Flyer with Banning. A Seeker. This gives target creature protection from all non-white creatures, right? Non-white, non-artifact creatures. Is that correct? Tell me in the comments if I'm correct. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna look it up now. Um, this is a PT. There's something again. Um, def a defending creature gets a bonus, I believe. Yeah, plus O plus three for a defending creature. The the problem with these cards is that it specifies that you can only play it on an attacker or on a defender. I think if I'm playing paying three mana already, and remember this is a card from Arabian Nights, which is chock full of very powerful cards. Then if I gotta pay three mana only for a defending creature, I mean, it would be bad if you just say pay three mana and any target creature get plus O plus three. It's already bad enough. You don't have to add anything to make it worse. But that's old school, I guess, sometimes. Uh, morale, yeah, this is also a card. Attacking creatures get plus one, plus one. I would have loved this card to just say attacking creatures get plus two, plus O. You know, that would be really sweet. I love the art, by the way. Really, those, those Mark Pool Knights at the back. I love them. I love that style, you know. I also like the Art and Crusade and Balance, and it's really sweet. Uh, then we have another Death Ward. And I think I'm almost at the end. Look at the cards. I wanted to make them into nice, neat little stacks, but that was uh, near impossible. Wow, Wouter, it's, it's amazing, amazing that you're giving this all away. Thank you so much. Um, first, let's do this because we saw this already. So that's a 2-2 two, two that I still don't know the name of. Or plus 2, minus 2, I should say, in chat creature. Uh, then we've got a Sephir Falcon. 
a 1-1 one -one flyer um, can fliegen, and you don't have to tap it to attack. Then we've got another Zephyr Falcon. We've got a Riesen Schildkrotte, so a giant tortoise. Another giant tortoise. Sweet, I love these. We've got a nice bird maiden, Vügel Mädchen. And we've got the vampire bats, Fledermause. So sweet. Do you remember the tick where you had the Fledermouse? That was one of the heroes in there. He was so funny. I love that show. I really did. Let me know in the comments if you if you watched the take as well. Then we've got the, uh, what are they called again? It's a 2-2. It's a zombie now, by the way. Uh, when they attack and are not blocked, they get plus 2, plus 0. So this actually works quite well with this one. And also in a zombie deck, they go quite well. If you go for the Swamp Hawk theme, you know, and you've got your, um, your zombie master out, it gains Swamp Hawk and... You know, evil presence, give your opponent a swamp, and then you can just attack and deal four points of damage a turn, which is really good. And then maybe you've got a bad moon, deal even five points. Amulet of Crook, so prevent one damage to any target. Um, Amru Kithkin, a 1-1, one, one, and it cannot be blocked by creatures with power greater than power two. So if you can pump this up, let's say with like a blessing, you've got a pretty nice thing going. Another Kithkin. And, ooh, a sandstorm. That reminds me of that song, like, do 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 Does this now ring a bell? Maybe not. Anyway, I like the song. Isn't it called Sandstorm? Maybe not. We've got more to go. These are the wolves. What are they called again? It's 2-4. And this Furia 2 stands for Rampage 2. And Rampage is this mechanic that was introduced in Legends and pretty quickly was left alone because it wasn't very successful. I do like it, but the Rampage mechanic was for every creature that it gets blocked to, besides the first, it gets a bonus according to the Rampage. So for Rampage 2, it would get plus 2, plus 2. That's pretty sweet. Uh, whoa, what's this card? Yeah, this is, this is like new magic. Like new old magic, I guess. So I don't know what this card is. Cannot help you with that. I am going to keep it, though. Normally, I would fling it away, but Walter, I'm going to keep it because you sent it to me. Oh, and then we have one of those energy leaks. I think that's the name. This one's French. Pendant la face d'entretien du contrôle de l'enchantement ciblé, la foi d'énergie lui inflige deux points de dégâts. Something like that. Something like that. And then we have, oh, this is nice. This is a nice addition. Red Elemental Blast. Really cool. And of course, another Kanfliegen, another Zephyr Falcon. That is really sweet. Let's have a look. I think I've got three Zephyr Falcons now. And maybe I think I already have a German one. So that means my play set of Zephyr Falcons is complete. Ich kann fliegen mit der Zephyr Falcons. Or as I call them, Westwind Falke. Ich liebe das, man. Super cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wouter. This is insane. Look at all the cards that he sent me. Let's uh, get the camera right. There we go. In, in, insane. And actually, there's some more posts because uh, I've got some posts from Kylie here as well. I did a little trade with her. And also for some foreign cards, I believe. And that was really a nice trade. I love to, one of the things I do is on the Timmy Talks Discord, we have a little sub trade channel. And what I like to do is just like trade small cards. So not big cards, but just, you know, just small stuff. I just find it a funny idea. I think I, I sent um, Kylie in, uh, what was it? The Sunken City, Italian Sunken City, another card or something. And uh, yeah, it's just really nice. Okay, here we go. Open it up. Got a little writing going on. Dear Timmy, here are a few more pieces for your Common Legends collection. Yeah. Looking forward to the color clash and maybe another match with you soon. As always, thanks for the great content. Cheers, Kylie slash Herfolk. Yeah, Herfolk's been on the channel as well a few times. So uh, check her out. She makes pretty cool, uh, cool decks. She's very laid back to play with. I like this, by the way. This is this is pro shipping. 
This is, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to reuse this. Kylie, I am impressed. That is a really good way of shipping. Now I got to take it out. So one of the things I'm working on is I'm trying to get all the comments together from Legends and Arabian Nights because I'm like, I cannot collect the whole set. That would be insane. So I'm now just starting with the comments. Just for once, you know. So we made a trade. And yeah, I subbed you this card, this card. Let me know in the comments below if you've never seen this card before, because that wouldn't surprise me. So sub to is an instant. Let's see what it does. Target creature deals no damage during combat, but gains X toughness until end of turn. X is target creature's casting cost. So you can you can basically save your creature with it, but not always. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's not great, but it's funny. And art is really cool, like that spear kind of turning into nothing, I guess. That's kind of funny. I think the thing is with Subdue is that the creature no longer deals damage, which is kind of a letdown. I think if it would just say um, it gains X toughness until end of turn and X is the creature's casting cost, again, it would still be pretty mediocre, but it would be, it would be more useful. But I still, I love it because it's such a quirky little card. Really good condition, by the way, Kylie. This card as well. And this is, oh yeah, Holy Day. Now, Holy Day is useful. Like the art, very cartoony. One white, creatures attack and block as normal, but none deal any damage. Uh, let's see. All attacking creatures are still tapped. Play any time before attack damage is assigned. So this is kind of like uh, the, the white fog, right? The nice thing about this, by the way, is this is the same artist, and you can kind of see that as the um, giant strength. It's got that same cartoony style. It, it, it reminds me a little bit of Quentin Hoover, but a, a little bit more cartoony, if you know what I mean. Let me know in the comments if you if you agree with that analysis. Anyway, um, thank you so much, Kylie, for sending me. And of course, Wouter, I'm just gonna say it again, you the man, Wouter. Amazing, all the cards you send my way, just because I really, really appreciate it. For now, thank you very much for watching another Mail Day video right here on Timmy Talks, and I'll see you next time. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?